We are back at 742 with the real story behind the upcoming movie Lone Survivor. This is based on a 2005 Navy SEAL operation in Afghanistan that ended up costing the lives of 19 members of the U.S. military. And NBC national correspondent Kate Snow sat down with the real-life survivor and the man who ultimately saved him. Kate, good morning. Good morning, Matt. Savannah, Lieutenant Mike Murphy, Petty Officer Danny Dietz, Petty Officer Matthew Axelson were all killed in the rugged mountains of Afghanistan, along with a helicopter filled with 16 SEALs and Army Night Stalkers who tried to rescue those men. In the movie, the only survivor is played by Mark Wahlberg, but his real name is Marcus Luttrell. And the only reason he's here now is because of a very unlikely friendship. Pentagon officials now believe that the United States has lost at least 17 of its The single deadliest down. day for American forces in Afghanistan. It was known as Operation Red Wings. U.S. military teams have recovered the bodies of dead Navy SEALs. But the search continues today for another still missing. A team of four Navy SEALs had gone in on a reconnaissance mission to photograph and possibly capture a senior Taliban leader. There's been absolutely no contact at all with that SEAL who's now been missing for more than a week. As the movie depicts, their cover was blown when goat herders stumbled on their hiding place in an area filled with Taliban supporters. Yeah, we can take them, but we're going to need a new spot. Real-life lone survivor Marcus Luttrell remembers every second. So you have to make a critical decision. We did. Our target was down there, it was broad daylight, and we were dealing with the situation. So we ran through every gambit of what would possibly happen, including eliminating the threat. The way I see it, we got three options. The SEAL team knew if they let the civilians go, they'd probably alert the Taliban. In the end, you voted to let them go. I did, yeah. Well, it was... Yeah, that's what we did. Yeah, did I want to kill them? Sure I did, yeah, absolutely. Do you regret the decision? No. This is what happened next. This video shot by the Taliban. Do it. The Hollywood version is equally intense. That scene in the movie is one of the most powerful I've ever seen. You're on, I'm watching on the edge of my seat for, I don't know, 40 minutes of the movie. Focus on me! Does it do justice to what actually happened? Sure. We got in a gunfight against the Taliban, fell down a mountain, everybody died. He fell down a mountain about five, six times. More than that in real life, actually. I mean, the movie is, what, two hours? A gunfight was over three hours long. How did you keep going? I just kept getting up, kept fighting. We quit when you kill us. And if you want to stop me, you're going to have to kill me. You lost all three of your teammates. It's, it's hard to imagine how you would have the strength to keep going at that point. No, you just keep going. You get up, fight harder. Every time you take one of your friends down, teammates down, he kind of jacks you up a little bit harder. You know, Marcus was wounded and thirsty when he came upon the man who would save his life. He started screaming American, and I spun around. I was on my knees, and I had my gun at my hip, and my safety off, tension out of my trigger. And he was looking down at, right at me. I could see his whites of his eyes. I was trying to tell him I wasn't Taliban, because I know that many enemy was looking for him in the mountains. And I was trying to warn him that you must be careful. Gulab lives strictly by a code of honor among the Pashtun tribe in Afghanistan, which includes kindness and protection for strangers. They picked me up, started carrying me down, carried me to the village. For three days, Gulab cared for Marcus, hiding him from the Taliban and sending his own father to a U.S. military base, which led to Marcus's rescue, as depicted in the movie. How many people have you lost in your family because of what you did for Marcus? Two are dead, two are very badly injured. And I still bet you would do it again. She says, I will always have my honor and I will hold it till my death. Marcus still aches for the friends he lost that day. You know, we didn't win, we, we lost. You can't, you can't switch that anyway in a book, in a movie, or anything like that, you can't turn that around and make it look like we won. We didn't win. We lost. So me coming out alive, that's not a victory. Some people see it like that. It's not. It's not a victory at all. 
Marcus is now medically retired. He's married, enjoying time with their two kids on a ranch in Texas. Gulab has come to America twice since all this happened, and the U.S. military did help him early on, providing new roads and jobs back in his village. Marcus is now trying to get him a green card so that he can come and visit more often. They have a friendship. There's an extraordinary end to this story, Kate. Thank you very much.